So in this video we're going to show you how to reset the timing if you put it all back together with one tooth off. So first thing we gotta do is raise and support the car, remove the front wheel, remove the access panel right here, and then right back up in here we're going to remove or loosen, not loosen, the bolt that tightens the power steering pump up. Flip the belt off so it's out of the way. And then we come around to the top and we remove the dog bone motor mount that goes right here. That's three screws to remove that, 14 millimeter. And then we're going to remove the alternator by loosening the adjuster here, removing the screw through it back here, and removing the cross pivot bolt there. And then we're going to pull the AC alternator belt back out of the way. And we're going to remove the, I believe it's five, one, two, three, one, two, or possibly four, four or five screws that hold the plastic cover plate on for the upper timing cover. Once we get that off, we can stick a wrench through the bottom, a big socket wrench and a breaker bar through the bottom, and we can spin the bottom crankshaft pulley around until it lines up with the zero degree mark down there on the timing indicator. Once we have that lined up, then we come back up to the top, and we see if our match mark that we put on the back plate lines up with the little dog ear on the camshaft pulley. And in this case, it was a one tooth off. So what I did is I loosened the tensioner pulley, pushed it down by prying down out with a pry bar, flat side the pry bar, and tightened it up so the belt was loose. Then I very carefully slid the belt straight off, marking, I marked one of the teeth on the belt with a little dab of paint and I said to myself that has to move, that, that dab has to move one tooth up. So I did, I carefully slid this off, I turned the top camshaft pulley, just one tooth mark, and then I slid the belt back on. After we slid the belt back on, we tightened the tensioner pulley, we put the breaker bar back on the bottom crankshaft pulley, rotated the whole thing around. So we rotated the crankshaft around, to distribute the belt tension evenly, stopping at one and seven eighths turns. Everything felt good and looked good. So then I tightened the belt up with a little tensioner again, and I had him proceed on to two full turns so that my timing mark was at zero down there and lined up with the little tick here, and it was perfect. So once that was perfect, I said just one more time, I said we're gonna tighten the belt one more time. So I loosened the pulley, let it pop up more, tightened it back down, and then we test started the car. We made sure both of the belts are out of the way and there wasn't anything blocking where the pulley's been at. And then we can see that it's gonna run or not. We fired it up and it runs really good now. We let it run for three or four minutes and there's no real danger in letting it run because the water pump's still spinning and everything's still working the way it's supposed to. The engine's staying nice and cool and it ran great. So now we're gonna bolt it all back together starting with the upper timing cover and the four or five bolts hold that on. After we get that on, we'll replace the bracket for the motor mount that goes here. That's the hardest thing to get off is this three, four, the two 14 millimeter bolts that are down here low into the block that hold that support bracket on for the motor mount. And one tool you could really use, which I don't have, but if you have a flex head wrench, like a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench with a flex head, that really helps get to it a little bit easier, but we just used a socket wrench on it. You gotta make sure you use a socket wrench that has kind of a flat shape to it. The big, thick, rounded ones are almost too thick to fit in, and your, your socket's gonna hit between the frame, and you're not gonna have enough room to get the socket and the wrench in over the top of the bolt. So, if you have the right tools and play around with it a little, it's not too bad. Once you get them loose, it was just a finger tight to unthread them the rest of the way because they've been in and out a couple times already when we first took them apart. So redoing it and resetting the timing is not that big of a deal if you got it wrong because you don't have to pull off all the stuff on the bottom. You only have to pull off enough to get to the top of the belt in order to reset it and get it right. And I hope this little trick helps you guys out. If you put it up back together and it's running rough or not running at all, you need to reset the timing. It's really not that hard. It took us about an hour to get it all apart, lined back up and running again. And now it's probably going to take us about another half hour to bolt everything back together. Like... Alright, a couple more tips for you. I was talking earlier about the kind of ratchet wrench you're going to use to get bound in there between the frame and the front of the engine. And I didn't explain it real well, but here's... I have this one here, which is a rounded kind. It's kind of thick. And I also have this 
flat elongated kind. The flat elongated kind is what you need here because it gives you just a bit more room and that, you know, it's not much more room, but if you look at them, line them up here and we can see the height difference between them. It, there we go. Look at that. You can see the height difference from maybe the angle. There you go. The round headed one is quite a bit taller than the flat headed one. And one more thing I want to show you when you're doing the top motor mount, some people call it the dog bone, but, uh, it has three 14 millimeter bolts that hold it on. You've got the one on the top frame mount here, and you've got the two on the engine mount here and there. And you're gonna wanna, sometimes when you're up on a jack stand or just setting on the ground, anything, you take this apart, the motor position shifts relative to the frame position. So in order to get it back into place, what I did is I took my long pry bar tool and I stuck it down behind that bracket where the motor hook goes to and I pulled forward as hard as I could and that actually transferred the weight of the motor far enough forward to line up the bolt holes for these two bolts here. And then we torqued them down really tight with the electric impact gun and we are good to go. If I can do it, you certainly can too. But it's not that hard, technically challenging. It's just a matter of knowing what you're doing and getting it done. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so have a great day. Bye for now.